Hello everyone, uh, my name is Gunjan and welcome to the podcast. Hai. This is Pali Amisha, Disha Pokhrel Ji, I'm a mental health uh, professional. I'm a bachelor in science in public health or psychology in the uh, United States. And I'm a teen-bars, I'm a mental health counselor, I'm a inpatient psychiatric hospital. I'm a behavioral modification, I'm a autism, I'm a child, 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 uh, welcome to the podcast, Jishya Ji. Uh, uh, can you explain a little bit about your educational background? Or, uh, can you explain uh, what's the actual work you do? Okay. So I currently hold a Bachelor of Science in um, Public Health, and I minored in Psychology as well as Nutrition. So I mixed um, a lot of Public Health major and um, apply it to in a psych setting where... I work as a mental health counselor um, in an inpatient psychiatric hospital in Boston. I also just finished up an internship over the summer working with kids in an urban public set, school setting where they have autism and uh, um, other developmental disabilities. Um, I do a lot of behavior modification. Um, I do, I've also done home therapies where I go into a client's home and do three hours of therapy session per week. Um, in addition to that, I have also worked in a emotions lab where we research kids who have autism and their emotional cues. Um, I guess that's it. That's oh, cool. I so uh, uh, regarding her and uh, uh Okay, so regarding her involvement with the podcast, uh, I'm leaving you up to keep the this on certain mental issues. Go to Nepal, my Iraq was a Austin a bucket. Do you have to get in a cafe coffee day when you were India go large chain go era see you only one day at Matagorno on the oily bucket. I'm really a robbery. Let me say that I could have a penny to a mental health patient lay on while I accuse Gordon by was a death. Recording or he said a lot of things and it seemed like he was disturbed. Ani you cases are concerned. Ani you have a common theme say, uh, the high stress related work situation just like a uh, journalist or who on just like he of a army police and entrepreneurs or maybe especially can you want high stake situation my camera on the uh, whenever you work uh, with these kind of people in high stress situation, what's the con- common denominator you see? Nepal ma pani, or Nepali or ma pani, or Bidesh ma, or US ma pani. What's the common denominator? I think there are a lot of common denominator denominators in that field. One of them is the stigmatization of mental health in our culture. We don't really talk about it. We, you know, the human emotions. Everyone has it. We all feel sad. We all feel happy. That's what makes us human. But we talk about things that make us happy, but we don't think, talk about things when they make us sad. You know, we sweep our um, like negative emotions under the rug because of the stigma that we might face, like the stigma we might get from the Nepali community. Um, another common denominator is that we don't practice self-care. I don't think that's one concept a lot of Nepali adults in my com- community know of. Um, you know, like self-care could include anything from going for a walk. They'll go for a walk for their physical health, but they won't go for a walk for their mental health. Um, another one would definitely, in, in, um, in my community, I've seen a lot of, I don't know how to describe it in Nepali, but it's sort of, you just, you just don't have coping skills either. You know, if you're feeling sad, you should have the coping skills. Like for me, if I'm having a rough day, I will listen to music or I will go for a run. You know, we just don't know about these things in the Nepali community. We don't know about self-care. We don't know about coping skills. And I feel like when you are in a high-stress situation, like you're a journalist, you're an entrepreneur, you are constantly on the go. So you're not giving yourself the time to just sit down and process all your emotions. 
So uh, uh, regarding this situation, like regarding your situation, you are doing this research. Uh, a video when one on one with you, one line, a Facebook group, my rakhna with you. The video ma chay exana other way see meko middle aged woman on with you. And you one is a cause is a mental health issue like say Nepal border, US zada hairy. And you tiya ko era tiya ko man share le cause a red cope with the reason. And one le cause a cope with no do reza cause a you kura argo bar me ambro samaj ma kure udhe ne isko bar a video ma bhi ma with you. Okay, so Facebook had a subtle Nepali networking group on it, so I am one of the moderators for it. I didn't start it, a really good friend of mine did, and it was an idea that we were bringing the Dai Sephora and Nepali community together. Um, and we do a weekly theme discussions relating to a lot of Dai Sephora things, like coming to the U.S. and going to school here. So we just do an open Q and A, and we find people in the community to talk about it. So my for my weekly theme, I wanted to focus on mental health and immigrant parents because I feel like that's something that we don't talk about. We talk about mental health and immigrants in general, like the immigrant immigrant kids. But the transitioning from the culture that you were born into and coming into a culture that is unknown is very hard for someone, even for an adult. So I wanted to focus more in a sense as to like are they suffering in silence and why are they suffering in silence so i set out to explore that question and i sat down with um a really good family member from my community and i learned that uh, obviously they don't practice self-care she mentioned that she would cry every day when she first got to the u.s but she never told anyone about it and I've talked to other Nepali adults about the same thing, even my mom. She would say that, yeah, when I first came here, I cried because I had a really good life. I sacrificed everything and I had to work a very low end job where I wasn't paid anything. So the, com the theme of just crying in, in silence was a big issue that no one was talking about. So if we were very open about it and if, uh, if our negative emotions weren't stigmatized, then we could have had all these people who are feeling the same emotions come together and relate to one another, one another um, instead of just these emotions and these thoughts being swept under the rug. And that, I think, is a coping skill of its own. Just being, it's sort of like a th unofficial therapy session. You're just bearing your emotions out there. Um, so that was one of my projects um, because I do have the experience in the mental health, so I set out to explore it. And I realized a lot of Nepali adults do suffer in silence. They seem resilient, but they do suffer in silence. Um, there was a case, Mir uh, Sathya Sangapani. So when I was in New Orleans for uh, between 2014 and 2018, at that given mm -hmm. time, I saw a lot of students. I have a more bakara ko ek barse bako thiyo. Ani bukampa ay Nepal ma ay na. Ani mo uthe ani especially mala thapan sa na bukampa ko. It was morning and especially uh, exam finals week chal raha kuthiyo. Ani I didn't even know. Abo mga garma buga mo mi routine was kuthi rakhnu ako sa. Ani ki garma suta milna na dangerous situation. This is a situation I realized kura garne man chhe aur kome thiye. किनकि <laughs> Ambro Tira Aligati Aligati Koi Manjas or Risaivani, Koi Sang Kivani, I mean they say reach out Gordon and choosing like them different sly. But if you could amble Nepal ma change Gordon Parneva, just like you could have like more entrepreneurship man, George Oligati, Kinegi, there is an a psychology porn with their theorunza, only more say law law pornunza, psychology pin pornunza, but mostly law ma practice gornunza, and Jot is an psychology pornunza, one master's gorra or PhD gorna like Bidish Nizanunza. Yeah, but sir, actual professional level, my psychological gone clients on bed on two kura ru yama lara and change now. No, what are the standards you'd put like basic building structures or the kiki rahnun jola? It's top I little chance by go away. If if I were to build some sort of a mental health startup in Nepal, I think one of the things I would first start off is just an open discussion. I would just get a focus group together and I would ask them, 
all right, what are the issues that we need to work on and how can we apply it to the Nepali culture? Because obviously I am coming from a Nepali American culture. You know, I was born in Nepal, but I moved to the U.S. when I was 11. So I don't really have that sort of a connection. So I can't bring my Western ideas there and uh, expect it to work. I can't bring in my like Western experience that works in uh, American culture and put it into Nepali culture. So definitely like start a focus group. How can I use mental health in this community? Because we have a lot of culture. We have like a lot of subculture, you know, some like it's like an iceberg. You see the tip of it, but you don't see the bottom of it. And then there's just like many factors, including it. So first of all would be how can I connect mental health to the culture in a way people will be passionate enough to utilize self-care, passionate, passionate enough to use the coping skills. Because you can't just give them a handbook and tell them to, oh, follow it and you'll become happy. Like that's not how it works. And mental health therapy, uh, it's, it's a pro process. It's not like you go to a psychiatrist or a psychologist once and you're fixed, you know? It's, it's not, and also like mental health is not a one size fits all concept. You know, we, we think we, we have this term mental health, but there's layers to it. Like something that would make me sad probably wouldn't make you sad. So how can we not make an individualized concept? How can we apply it to everyone? How can we apply it to different sex, you know, different, different, I know we have different cultures, just like different families. You know, my sister and I aren't the same. We have different experiences. Everyone grows up based on experiences. We all have different experiences. So how can I not individualize it? So first of all, related to the culture. Second of all, don't make it a one size fits all concept. And then the third one would, I think I would um, just, I don't know. I think I would, I don't, I don't know how to explain it. Um, in Nepali culture, obviously I don't know much, so I can't say much about Nepali culture, but in Nepali American culture, I would just have just people sit down and be like, hey, let's talk. Let's just talk about everything and anything that you want to, and then take notes on what are the common factors that everyone is facing. So I hope that answers the question, but that's how I would start bringing mental health and the concept of therapy into Nepali culture. So I do want to give a shout out to My Emotions Matter. Right? They are okay. a st local startup here that are dealing with uh, mental health issues. Uh, uh, at least they're starting to build up this concept about uh, emotional resilience in uh, among entrepreneurs, business people, <laughs> students. And I attended the session with one of them and their story was so inspiring and how the CEO uh, got to the idea of starting doing a startup in Nepal that was based on emotional resilience. So I do want to give a shout out to them. And if anybody out there wants to, you know, uh, uh, go out and reach someone uh, for emotional resilience, their place to uh, start. Ani, uh, I, would, I do want to ask you a little bit more about your work because that really okay. interested me when you wrote wrote to me, you were talking about uh, dealing with immigrant children and how their mm -hmm. mental health processes work. Um, mm -hmm. Can you go a little bit uh, in detail into what you actually do in that space and then how these things have shaped you as a mental health professional and moving forward? Okay, so growing up as the diaspora kids, I couldn't relate to two culture at the same time. You know, I would come home and I would have the Nepali culture because my parents would expect me to follow along to a lot of, you know, rules that we have in the Nepali community. And then I would go to school and it was completely different. Um, so I, I remember one instance where I learned in my psych class in high school. Um, it was like, oh, go look, go talk to your parents about their feelings and emotions and my parents at that time worked 18 hours a day you know American parents we don't they don't make a lot of money and they have to make the ends meet and they're coming home tired and I have a school project where I have to talk to them you know just have them take time out of the day and that wasn't possible so as as like a person growing up in Nepali American society I really I, you know my emotions were all over the place you know I would see my friends and their parents so involved in their school activities, in just in their life. But I had parents who would work 18 hours a day, so they couldn't come to parents' teacher conference. So that really put a dent in my mental health as to, wow, like my parents sort of do not care. But that wasn't the sense. It was like, they do care. That's why they're working 18 hours to provide for me. Like everything they've done 
is a sacrifice. And uh, and also the term sacrifice. Yes, they did sacrifice a lot for me. And I felt the need to always be the perfect, perfect person. Because how can I not be perfect when they've left so many great things behind? So that's just the, just like the concept of being perfect was hard on on my emotions too because I would have an American friend who would go out and have fun and I would be at the library working and like trying to be just the concept of perfect I think could cause someone to go to a breaking point and uh, this just we just also do not talk about how the expectations of immigrant parents affect the immigrant children themselves so I I would just talk to a lot of immigrant kids in um, Boston since it's such a pub and we all would have the same ideas it's just like oh we have to be perfect we have to put 110 percent in everything but we can't tell them the struggles that we're facing you know because if we're getting bullied at school we can't talk to them about it because we just you know who are to go to school and study and then come home like if you would just do that that's not a thing you know just like the body parents wouldn't be able to relate to the high school culture here mm-hmm. and that was also another hard thing to process because like we we would we want our parents to be involved just because it because they just have their own ways to make the ends meet. So there's just like a lot of like social thought into the society for a kid to not look at the sexual achievement. And also when, until we get compared a lot to other kids in our community, you know, it's like, oh, that family kid is doing so well. Like why aren't you doing as well as them? Why oh yeah. So yeah, yeah. That 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 I I, I think I can share. It's, it's I think I can share with that value because like most, regardless if you're Nepali in Australia, India, uh-huh. Nepal, anywhere, that comparison thing is yeah. something really common. So uh, go ahead. But I did want to say that is not uh, unique just to Nepali yeah. Americans, but that's unique to Nepali it's people all around the globe. Yeah. Yes, that's also very hard because you're getting compared to your cousins and you love them so much, but you're also it's resenting them in a sense. It's like, oh, my cousins are doing so well. Why can't I do as well as them? Like, what is lacking in me? But the thing is, we're all different, so how can something lack in me? Like, I, I should be happy. My resentment of unacceptable to be, to be perfect. We sort of have these resentments surrounding them, but we can't obviously talk about it because that's just kind of like, you know, we can like, provide this, like, picture perfect uh, picture of ourselves. So just like not being able to talk about anything issues that we ourselves face is hard on its own. Yeah. So uh, I I did want to ask you something else because I want to relate to it uh, it to my experience. So uh, when I spend a little bit of time in New Orleans and. For those people who don't know, Boston and New Orleans, the uh, uh, type of demographic and the type of people are really different. So uh, New Orleans is basically a really a liberal town, but um, it's in the Bible Belt. So you have the typical uh, uh, American thing, what you are seeing portrayed in the media, whatever. Yes. Uh, the, uh, but then they were not, and I uh, got to friend a lot, befriend a lot of Cajun people, people from South Carolina, people from Alabama, Arkansas, Mississippi, and all those people. And I found something really interesting was that they did not really care about. Uh, the fact that I was brown or I had a different religion or anything else, but they did have this sort of an anguish that, that was pent up that was like taught to them about uh, the post 9-11 uh, students, like the children and all of that. And that kind of 
it had been washed down, but there was still a resentment of that. And they used to not lash out to me, but they would try to explain what their mental psyche is, situation is. So even in U.S., if we are really about to talk, compared to Nepal, it's like mental health is really accepted there, but the situation is not that great as well in parts of Louisiana and New Orleans because there, there were so many issues that I don't like to discuss right now. Did you see them that sort of behavior when you were growing up in your schools over there? How did the students like treat you over there were they uh was it uh, and i knew and i know it was just before uh, was it a decade after 9 11 that you uh started living there as a student so how was the sentiment how did people react to you because you interacted with uh americans quote unquote quote more than your parents because they were out working and you had a life yeah. with these americans so what was the what was the situation there Oh, so I first moved to the U.S. in 2009 with my family. I was 11, so I started off in middle school here. And I remember my first day, I was just shocked, you know, cultural shock, because school in Nepal isn't like the school in the U.S. You know, in in U.S. it's sort of more lax compared to Nepali school is what I saw. Um, and my I didn't I didn't really have a lot of friends, you know, because I was this random kid who just showed up in the middle of the school year you know everyone had their own group um so i didn't i didn't really have a lot of friends for like for like two or three years and that was hard on its own because you go from having so many friends in like nepali school eating lunch together to just like not having anyone here so that was hard and um everyone was actually at first very interested in me you know interested in my culture because they hadn't talked to anyone who was from Nepal. And at that time, no one no one knew about Nepal. So when they would ask me where I was from, I'd say Nepal. And be like, oh, where is that? So I would constantly be like, oh, it's between India and China. And then they're like, oh, so you're Indian then. It's like, no, it's it's a different culture. Yes, we have similar similarities, but it's different. So no one really would, would understand my culture. You know, it was just like, it was unknown to them. So I, I would have to constantly explain to them that, oh, this is me, this is how I am, this is my, my culture. But like somewhere in the midst of that, I realized that I started giving into their expectation of me, you know. I started to practice English so so much to let go of my accent because that was, that was something that I would be made fun of. It's like, oh, like, just I remember this one interaction, like, you know the term data? So in, I think in Nepal, it's, uh, it's pronounced as like data, data. They, yeah, data. I think it's like data. But like I, that's what I said, and they're like, "What do you mean? That makes no sense. It's data." And like ever since then, I started saying data. So I started assimilating to their concept of me. You know, it's like, oh, you are an immigrant, but you need to assimilate to our culture and our thought of you. So that's how it started. So, but at first, everyone was just like very shocked. It's like, oh, you, you, we don't know where you're from. You're like this foreign, like cause of interest to us tell me more but also like relate to me like tell me about you in a sense that I will understand you like in a sense I will understand your identity you know it was just a lot of assimilation at first which which was awful because I shouldn't have to let go of the culture to fit in this idea of someone else and I, I don't I can't speak for how it was in New Orleans because I didn't grow, grow up in that setting I did grow up in like a hub for diversity but it was still it was still the same it was still like oh you are this magnificent magnificent like foreign thing that i've never interacted with so tell me more but mm -hmm. also tell me in a sense that i will understand yeah that i see that's a lot of a common thing between americans is that they can only relate to things if they are presented in a term in terms where uh that is really uh not foreign to them for example uh you're in a basket uh, like baseball i see there it's a baseball stadium right behind you so mm -hmm. if i had to describe uh what cricket is and i would have to describe it in terms of baseball yeah. if i had to describe yes. to them yeah if i had to say uh describe uh any other games like Dundee view or whatever or like yeah. any traditional games yeah. i would have to describe them like yeah oh yeah kabaddi is like just like <laughs> football but without the ball but you have to go like that and they would get it almost into yeah. instant so yes. that seems to be uh, like a driving point for Americans. So what is the difference between Nepali Americans and uh, Nepali people and then Americans? So you talked a lot about these things. So what would you say, like, what would you say, like the one thing 
is the difference between all three people? Like, if so there what, were three people. So, like, one difference between Nepali Americans and ne like, like Nepali people, people right now? I don't know. I feel like, I don't know. What would be the difference? I guess I, I, I haven't been back to Nepal since I've been here. So, but I've had a lot of cousins who have been back. And I guess one of the differences that we expect Nepal to just the Nepali culture to stay the same as it was when we first got there. But I realized that it's it's kind of been heavily like Western and like there's been a lot of Western influence in in like Nepali culture. So I guess I think personally that Nepali American community is more conservative than Nepali community in Nepal right now. Wow, that's very interesting. Hmm, interesting. Okay. Because in Nepali American culture, we hold on to the cultural like typical cultural conservative conservative expectations like my parents it's like you know it's like we do you know, just don't 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 eat beef don't eat this because that's like a sort of a nepali culture but i feel like in nepal i can't like i i can't say it from experience but from what i've heard of people who've been to like friends and family who've been to nepal they come back shocked as to like, like how open nepal is right now and here it's not for my project. I talked to um, another adult. She didn't. I didn't add her voice to the video, but she was telling me how when she would hang out with her friends in Nepal, they would go out, drink, and smoke. But here, if you go to Nepal, like with, like party, and they catch you drinking, that is like a big deal. It's like that's a no, no. Like you can't do that. Like if Auntie she see you drinking, like you better believe that you're in trouble. But I feel oh like my god. Nepal, I did okay. I, I, let, let me tell you something honestly. So in my okay. five years, uh, I spent uh, with a family only a month. Like it was my uh, mom's cousin. So she was my aunt technically. So I went to her house. I spent a month there. And I, I can realize what you're talking about. For the rest of the other 60 months or 59 months yeah. I spent in the U.S., I did not have an authority figure telling me what to do. Honestly, I went to a party yeah. and did whatever I wanted to. I didn't eat beef because, like, trust me, I don't. I wanted yeah. to try, but I, like, I couldn't put that yeah. in my mouth. But I like bacon and uh, I ate that. But that's really interesting because uh, most of the people that go out, like, when you're a student and then yeah. you're trying to go out after like your grade twelve, and you're trying to go for undergraduate even graduate level. I can't talk about graduate level because I can't relate to those people. Mm -hmm. Same way you can't uh, relate to me because I yeah. grew up with Americans when I was supposed to learn about all these progressive ideas. Yeah. I learned about so many things. Now, I, I, I even I can't say I'm totally Nepali because yeah. I come here and I ride the bus every day and then uh, I notice the change that whenever people watch me in the bus, I get like freaked out. And yeah. uh, I'll tell you this incident, okay? Uh, this is story time now. So I was at the back of the bus. There's usually five or six seats at the end, right? So all of them were empty. So I chose this window seat. I sat there. And this dude comes up and then sits right next to me. When there's like four empty seats right there. And I tell him, oh, uh, uh, there's other empty seats right here. And then he's like, he got like agitated. He, he could not fathom that I wanted to sit away from people. And he's like, the bus is going to be filled anyway. It's what problem do you have? Like, yeah. at least, dude, when it's going to be filled, I'm be, I'm going to be okay. But right now, and I just moved from my seat to the other side of the window, and he yeah. looked at me disgusted. But then I had this thing about, like, whenever you have this uh, a personal space thing, and I, uh, like, I had a really hard time grasping it, but once I got it, I want personal space a lot, like, when it comes to, like, sleeping and eating yeah. and everything i don't want people to touch my plate here yeah, like the, touching the plate and everything yeah. and i i kind of am used to it now but then for the five first six months i was not used to it yeah. so is that the same case with your home like you do not care about personal space inside the home but outside you're like more americanized is that the case personal space um Maybe like for maybe for us it could also be like a gender issue, just because you know you are a guy and I'm a girl, so I like my personal space. I would rather not, you know. I, even at home, I I enjoy my personal space. It's like oh, like maybe we can just have sort of like one arm length between each other 
And obviously, like when I'm in a train or a bus and it's rush hour, I I can't really deal with that because it's very packed. But I I don't know. I feel like it's the same for me at home and outside here. But I can't say how it'll be when I come to Nepal. Yeah. You know, um, my friend, he might I'll get culture shock and that might change. So I do want to uh, do want to ask you relating to what you said. You do want to come to Nepal, and uh, yeah. I assume uh, that uh, if you ever came to Nepal, you'd benefit benefit Nepal not in just terms of tourism, and you'd be yeah. bringing uh, green dollars here and spending yeah. it. Uh, but I just uh, I just want to know what are your intentions like. I see a lot of non-residential Nepalese, like yeah. especially my age, between eighteen to thirty-five. Uh, between that age, I want them to come and invest in Nepal. They don't have to stay in Nepal, get okay. out, you know, go do your jobs. But then, yeah. when you come to Nepal, if you invest in, let's say, hotels or yeah. innovation centers, or even if you give a thousand bucks a month, a thousand dollars a month to a startup here uh, that's working in the like technical space, that's a lot of money for them. Like one lakh rupees is the operation cost yeah. uh, for some companies here in Kathmandu. Yeah. Imagine. You give that money to someone in Pokhara, like their operation cost is even lower. Um, yeah. So, what w- what would be the conditions you'd want so that you might might want to come back to Nepal and invest your hard earned money here? I think um, so. I am actually coming to Nepal this year. I just actually bought my tickets, which is interesting that this conversation came up. But I am coming to visit my family and friends. That's my condition as to why I'm coming. I have, and you know, I'm coming for Dasi and Tia. And I haven't celebrated Dasi and with my grandparents in 11 years. So my condition for coming is to be with my family. My intention isn't to invest. But, um, I mean, if I'm at a good point in my career where I do have disposable income, and if I did want to invest in something, um, I think it would be something. I don't know if there's any, like, good startups in Nepal. Like, I really haven't, like, heard about things, but I feel like it would be tech-focused in a sense and my field is in tech so i think my investment would be in something related to education and mental health like something that i am passionate about so one of the condition would have to be am i passionate to invest in the startup and I, oh, I think what I'm kind of value you would add yourself to that startup if it wasn't just money itself right like you could bring technical advisors or you could give in like personal advice in terms of professionalism like you said uh uh, there is uh, certain startups that are working not only in tech, other situation too. If you want to know about them, watch the podcast. A uh, little bit of self plug right there. But then, yeah. like I said, like my emotions matter. If those people were in contact with you, uh, they could yeah. learn a lot and you could connect them with uh, uh, the Psychology Association of America or any professional associations there. Maybe the volunteers over there would want to come to Nepal and help out. Mm-hmm. That's the kind of value as an investor you want to provide. Uh, Hello everyone. Uh, we're back. Uh, we had some internet issues, but now we've figured it out. And yeah, I mean, take question with So just like he, my leg, I didn't want that. So I go to Nepali community. My name is Ian. So he wants to know. What kind of issue have you? What I've seen. I'll tell you a little bit of story. My old office my guy, and I started having really nice chat with this gentleman. And he bought it. But the office my guy said, "One, like, what happened? So he, my brother, mommy, go background or certain." political party sang thyo bhanna aba sanu ma aba bua mommy hajura ma ke ke huncha na bhai jada tapai ta esto esto rai san i didn't know ma ma ta ke pin tha chan so that kind of uh, there was a reverse culture shock bhano ani uh, is that thing prevalent uh, ta uh, first generation ma and is that thing uh, translated into the second generation to second generation man cha ki you guys don't care about that like our family's history like the political affiliation of our family members yeah. or anything in general yeah, i don't um, think so like the first generation or even the generation that moved with their families here i i we are very open minded about a lot of things that our parents aren't so if someone came up to me and they said oh like my well maybe not in i guess not now with the political climate actually um so like if i i mean obviously like i think the nepali community is very like um of a liberal democrat in a sense because you know a lot of us are immigrants but like relating it to american politics right now with um you know a lot of republicans and a lot of like anti-immigrant sentiment if someone from the community were to come to me and be like hey i actually think i support 
uh, Trump and I am actually gonna vote for him. I, 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 I feel like I'd be taken back by it definitely just because a lot of us do not relate to his political ideologies. You know, we don't relate to putting people in internment camps. So, I mean, just like in general, you know, you just don't take, you know, yeah. put over. so maybe, yes. So if someone were to come to me, they're like, I'm going to vote for Trump for 2020 because I agree with his um, anti-immigration stance. I agree about the things he says. I definitely would be taken back by it because it would show to me that yes you went through yes you came here legally you know that took a process but we still need to empathize with the people and i guess that sense of em empathy is gone so i am definitely gonna have resentment towards them i guess yeah. so you're talking about opening up political discourse we don't want to get into it just to buy an example more than just that Trump could have 2016 my kids any understood he was gonna win Tiago vote local vote so even modest discussion my I know he's gonna win, but uh, and then whenever you utter that word, it automatically, oh, what the assumption was, to you, to you came ama, to you came ama, oh, what? To level of political discourse, a lot of people in America, man, yeah, it's a ulta way, right? Okay, yeah, so the politics ko pura introduce gora hai. Tadi tadi, I mean, just alienate udhe gaye ra. So for example, whenever people start talking about politics, yeah, kine ki. We've been through so much the political stuff and all of that through uh, Barsama. Even uh, you went back uh, 2009. That was uh, like 2010. Ma, SLC 2010 SLC did the Harry Botti thi na. Botti na udhari political to koi ki uni koi ki uni jam hoy thi ne bonda hoy thi ne. Is to is to le kar daare mo pagi sahe the. Khas mo America jan ko reason pani kiti ho ne. Pulso ko engineering jas pani is the paper chaite ra koi ani cancel gaur aidi. But that's the moment I decided I don't want to stay here. I So, in a way, I don't want to stay I I'm very mental health issue maso. Jab aise is to is to political issue hamse. Jab entertainment camp ko kura haru hamse. Jab aise dum shocking images haru media ma hamse. Jab aise I'm like say empathy ko kura kar sao. Tei bela maso I'm here le there khel ko word sun jao hai na. Ni is to sun da hari manche haru lai se is to kura maso. Apela ko gor na ko lagi. Kosto khel ko strategies haru li da hari se. Tapai lagi lagi se best sun jao la. Political climate ma like the coping strategies when you see. Um. Images and this words. Discussion, open discussion about the feelings that you're having after, you, like recently. Um, I don't know if you would know about. Probably would. There was an image surfaced of a father and a daughter. They oh yeah, had, the uh, water uh, yeah. to see in the yeah. border. Yeah. Yep, yeah, one crossing the border, and that triggered a lot of um, people here. You know, and I think in the sense that, like, I kind of held on to my emotions because I didn't want to really speak about it because it was just so shocking to me like just like the symbolism of a father carrying the daughter and them both you know drowning in water while crossing the border for a better life but then they ultimately see their demise that was that was very triggering you know that that's definitely that was very heavy stuff and um I wish I had opened up to my friends but like wow what do you guys think of this because to me this is shocking i can't believe this is going on in our country right now you know mm -hmm. so if if you see something in in the news that triggers you talk to someone um i think that would be one of the best coping mechanism that you could utilize because other people are going through the same thing as you you might not realize that but we are um you know we're humans we have a lot of similar emotions so Chances that are other people like your friends, they're going through the same thing as you. So just, just be open about it. Just be open about your feelings and discuss them with the people around you. Uh I'll get desensitization from uh media uh, mm -hmm. I'm so used to seeing people's head get chopped off, uh they get shot. Uh media mother like Hollywood, I mean Bollywood, even like any type of 
like yeah. a movie you can quote, like action movie or like or with gore. I've seen it, and then mm. I'm kind of desensitized. You're more personal, Gura. I'm kind of desensitized with okay. it. Whenever I see this kind of media, it doesn't affect me as much. Because like the sort of mental walls or we even practice on something, the fatigue from all of this has set in. And all Gura, but in Malay, it's a very interesting. You talk about the imagery of the father and the daughter. Malay, it's a very imagery. It's a very key part of it. जो सीविल वार थी अभी तब चाहे आई वॉज लाइक ओल्ड इनफ टू अंडरस्टैंड एंड आई मच्योर फैस्टर इनफ इन टर्म्स अफ रिडिंग एंड एवरी थिंग तो एट इमेज थी के दिस प्रिंसिपल फ्रम अ स्कूल वॉज टाइड टू दिस पोल अभी वहाँ लहाँ को घाटी भी एकदम ताने को इट वॉज इज लाइक अ कोर्ब्स अभी इमेज को कांतिपुर हो कि न्यूज पेपर में ठेक अगाड़ी रखा थे कि छोपे सो दैट कैंड अफ इमेज यू वॉज लाइक इन माई हेड वेन यू विल लाइक मैं यो ये कुछ में अलग आर कुछ इट डजन एफेक्ट मी एज मच बट देन दैट्स अ साइन अफ लाइक अ लड अफ फटिक एंड गेटिंग यूज टू अल अफ दैस सो हाउ डू वी लिमिट आवर सेल्स वेन वी सी अल अफ दिस इन द मीडिया एंड इन आवर इंटरटेनमेंट अभी एट पोजिटिव फिड फिडबैक लुप को बारे में तब ठा हो आई एम जस्ट लर्निंग दैट टर्म जो सोशल मीडिया में एवटे कुरा कोई सपोर्ट कर रहा देखी रहने कोई मैं कप केक्स को बारे में हे रहा है खाली कप्स के कप केक्स मत देखने हाउ डू वी स्टप आवर सेल्स फ्रम दैट हाउ डू वी गो एंड दैट बी मोर अंडरस्टैंडिंग अरुण अरुण को पॉइंट अफ भ्यू भी कसरी बुझने हाउ डू यू ब्रिंग दैट स्ट्रैटेजी वेन यू आर ट्राइंग टू गेट इन टू सोशल मीडिया um go into groups with open minded people who are willing to share their opinions with you and, and uh, just just don't disregard other people's opinion you know like um like i said about the whole trump thing i would be taken back by it but i also would be like hey why do you think you are supporting trump and i would want to understand their viewpoint and with the whole seeing seeing those things on social media and not becoming the like i guess your question is how do you not become decent sensitized to it um you get desensitized when you keep seeing things again and again and again and again so maybe take a break i guess like you know focus on why can't you empathize with seeing someone drowning you know like why is your head why is your mindset in that sense so maybe just take a break just refocus um try to see like what what your mental like thought process is and then go back to it and maybe you'll have a different viewpoint for it uh okay so we were talking about uh why why that thing is so important to me when you can you as a as an entrepreneur i'm i will have to work at some point with other people and i have to understand their point of view pani mm-hmm. uh you have to work with people you're in a team and that kind of affects how uh things um, like gel and how you work with other people uh any it's just the cases man whenever you work with people and whenever you see uh patients what are like the telltale signs that somebody is not mentally stable you know like what are the like the uh, signs that like, like in the US we have the DSM-5 which is a book that has all of the mental health issues and the way to diagnose it so definitely like i mean i come from like evidence based field so i would utilize the dsm5 because it is accurate and it follows science so my answer would be to using the book to mm-hmm. to diagnose someone but i guess a tell tell sign i mean just like are they in a manic phase or are they like really the the phase they are usually in like are they at a manic or are they at a baseline phase so what is like when when the first like interaction you have are they like in a are they grandiose about their thought or are they open to sort of seeing different point of view because i feel like when you have uh when you have someone in a manic phase they can't see other people's point of view like they're so focused in their own vision and in their own thought process so maybe look into that see, like what the difference is between baseline versus the manic phase And um, you can find a telltale sign that way. Uh, illusions of grandeur. So, here I go, man. Sir, I'll tell you. I'm going to talk to you. And then that kind of like triggered me. Not in terms of like, oh shit, it triggered me in terms of uh, to think. Oh shit, I'm going to pursue. Oh shit, I'm going to pursue. 
poli ko mm-hmm. car ko payment bori in, or insurance ko payment and everything mm-hmm. that credit card and all of that stress gets added up together and then you don't think about other things just like you agine to pal ekdam interesting kura ke launu bhane whenever i have disposable income mm-hmm. that's when i would invest yahan chai our disposable income bhanne concept pani alikati like for nai sa bhanu so can you explain a little bit about the disposable income and why it's so important for like immigrant like children and immigrant especially and why it's hard for you guys to uh have that because when my parents first moved here um they weren't you know my dad had his own business back in Nepal and he was living a really good life he was making a lot of money and when we moved here you you have you're not getting paid you know you're working um just like um you're working a job that doesn't pay a lot you're living paycheck to paycheck and that's how you make the ends meet like you get a paycheck every week or biweekly and uh, and then that money goes to rent that money goes to food and that money goes to car um so you are left with nothing you're like you are left with any savings so in um america the concept of american dream is can be achieved with like i think uh, my in my sense that if, when you have this disposable income that you can use um for for things that you want to do not for the things that you have to do mm-hmm. so for first generation kids or the kids who move with their parents when they are very young um we my, our parents will feel like we have a strong foundation in the american society when we have that disposable income to live the life of luxury that they never got to live mm-hmm. and so- also they they have this sort of expectation from us that the disposable income will go a, a portion of it will go towards them and i think you know when i am at that ground it would go towards them because of the sacrifices that they may, made and um yeah i and now that we've had this conversation I, it definitely would go into investing in the mental health scene of nepal as well mm-hmm. just learn that oh, it's becoming- and i do want to relate something else to the mental health kura just like he, uh <laughs> uh personally i have a situation with my health especially with my eyes mala chai jal bindu bhanne rog cha aba yo jal bindu ma ke chai ke huncha ni aankha ko ocular pressure chai ekdam high huncha ekdam it's higher than normal and average and then you just gradually lose peripheral vision and then when you get into old age you lose like all of your vision that could be that could happen that could not nice sensitivity but any bosne kura huncha jastai ki any cancer ko kura ma ni huncha and all these issues uh related to certain different medications any uh, and as far as i know there are certain states in us uh jastai ki of a west coast ma sabai state and even massachusetts lebani uh get a use of cannabis and uh, research into these things and uh, medication related to this legalized gora ago sa uh how does like uh, the nepali community react to that kind of thing you know our culture song even cannabis or the song interested kura haru even business related so but then it's very uh, harsh harsh they like them once any am song hiri dena what's the nepali community as uh, reaction tapai har ko mer ko manche ani budo manche you don't have to disclose anything but then if you don't want to talk about it it's cool too no um i think my my friends the age group that i am in they are open to legalizing marijuana but my parents definitely would not be because when Massachusetts had it in a ballot to legalize marijuana last election cycle and uh, it was it was question i think it was question 4 in the ballot and i obviously was like yeah like let's let's do it like it our, our society is going to geared towards it and we can't just be stuck in old ideology is and um if if we do it legally we can regulate it um but my parents were definitely like ag- against it that that was cuz in their thought process it's a drug it's going to harm harm your body it's mm-hmm. not something that should be in a culture so the older generation is definitely so cons- conservative about legalizing marijuana whereas the younger generation my age group is very liberal towards it I asked this question kinagi you know, uh there's a there's two part of cannabis there the CBD oil which is like doesn't get you high that treats uh, cancer patients and even uh, if you didn't know there a uh, ruling party ko ek jana 
assembly member or a senator or congress mm-hmm. senator uh, he raised a question in the parliament nepal go parliament when he started talking about we should legalize this in terms of medical uh, situations as a prof- medical professional le chai prescription near gorn parcha kinaki yahi prescription la manche har bidesh gaira chan canada gaira chan bhanera uh would nepali people uh, uh, especially i know uh, foreign nepali investor non resident investors have a lot of pool nepal go businesses ma uh, do you think like most of these people might want to come back if it's legalized in nepal and do that sort of a business because i see lot of people here and i tell you uh, they'll tell us like oh ina yo rajakta ho eta ho ta but then 90% of the people that i met काठमंड वाली को माथि को पूरा जानुस गाउँ गाउँमा चाहिँ बनाएर राखेर प्लास्टिकहरुमा राखेको हुँदो रहेछ वाज रियली ओपनिंग टु मी किनकि म 19 वर्षको सादा मलाई थाहा पनि थिएन फर्केर आउँदाखेरि अब लाइक यु स्टार्ट हाइकिंग अप यु स्टार्ट सीइंग नेपालको बारेमा के छ कसो छ म कौतुहल त थियो गर बुझा अचम्म लाग्यो के मलाई यो देख्दा अनि इभन वाइस एशिया डिड द स्टोरी एउटा गाउँमा एउटा मन्दिरमा गएर उले खनेर के रे घोटा सोटा बनाएर अनि त्यो भाइसको रिपोर्टरलाई नि खुवायो अनि पुरा भजन कीर्तनहरूमा गरिरहेको थियो सो इट्स सो इन्ग्रेन टु अवर सोसाइटी बट देन इट्स सो हर्स हर्स एनि व्हाट व्हाट डू यू थिंक अबाउट दिस रियलाइजिङ एन्ड हियरिङ अबाउट अल अ दिस एन्ड नेपालमा यस्तो रहेछ भनेर लाइक व्हाट्स युर टेक आर यू शॉक्ड अबाउट इट अर लाइक आई एम डेफिनेटली शॉक्ड बिकॉज टु मी ओबवियसली ग्रोइंग अप इन इन माय फॅमिली व्हिच इज अ बिट कन्झर्वेटिव आई कैन यू नो से दैट लाउ it's just it was just you know marijuana it's not something you talk about so just hearing that all the things happening in Kathmandu is definitely definitely shocking um uh-huh. it's it's shocking yes so yeah right. but but it's still illegal police are let's not say yeah and they were putting a rupura and then he 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 got a psycho it's really awesome to hear about it you know 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 मलाई चाहिँ सबैजना इन्ट्रोड्युस गरेर थियो फर सिक्स मन्थ्स लाइक अबाउट अल दिस सिन्स आई एम लाइक ड्याम इट्स अ बिग मार्केट नि आई एम लाइक इफ यू लाइक लिगलाइज दिस एन्ड देन मेक इट इन्टु अ बिजनेस दिस वुड बी ह्युज एन्ड देज वी टक टु दिस बायोटेक कम्पनी ओके दे आर कल्ड शुभम बायोटेक दे आर वन अफ आवर मोस्ट वाच भिडियोज एन्ड दिस सिईओ टक अबाउट फर टेन मिनट्स अबाउट हाउ ही वुड ग्रो मेरोवाना एन्ड देन ही ह्याड अ साइन्टिफिक भ्यू अन इट And that was very refreshing yeah. because he was open to talk about it. I mean, that that was such illuminating thing for me. Because like, yeah, so they say like people would think it would be bad for your business, but then he's talking about it in like an open like way, and it's very interesting. I mean, also, uh, uh, people here use the N word uh, for <laughs> no reason. I don't think I don't think they understand the gravity of that situation. And then and it, it's very awkward for me to. like yeah. like some people type it and all of that it was like yeah. ingested because i had a lot of african american friends but mm-hmm. they say that like that's what what's your take on that is that weird to you it's definitely shocking to me when it probably people use the n word i think it's 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 something that we shouldn't yeah. because the, um, i have a lot of black friends and i actually had this discussion and they say they they can use it because they are reclaiming the word you know mm-hmm. that that's their opinion but i don't think any we should i don't think we should use it just because it's very degrading when we use it yeah but I think, I think, but I here just, when, I, when i hear about uh hear from like especially 19 20 year old like people here and they're using it and then they think it's so cool but it's like such like in a yeah. way you're coming in from like us itself yeah it's like oh like this is such a touchy topic here when you come in like it's so like like fascinating to understand like these people hear it from all the rap songs and then they're thinking it's such a cool word but then yeah. if they were to use that word in us and unknowingly these people were talking with an african american there that would be a, a very uh tense moment with that um I, I I asked you all the questions I had. Yes. Do you have any questions for me? Nepal, how are you killing around? How are you killing around? Like, do you have any questions, or do you, uh, uh, do you have any questions regarding like entrepreneurs here, or do you have any questions regarding like what I do with this podcast? Uh, go uh, shoot. Yeah, I mean, go ahead. Uh, you can explain like the podcast thing to us yeah. because um, in subtle Nepal networking, we would like love to know more about it, and I know the moderators there. We would. 
like to know what your vision for it is and how do you think your podcast could create a dialogue for such different things and um, bring their belly society into like sort of some of the conservative ideas that we have how can it, how can you bring that into like a modern 21st century sense so um your podcast co aim what the aim of this podcast is like uh when i came back i wanted to raise money for this like extremely hard scientific uh uh like hard tech startup i wanted to do can i give a us ma bosera Uh, if you wanted to, if you didn't know, if uh, it is space related, कुने काम करने सा नहीं international trafficking of arms and regulation, आईटार बने तो रही सा you are allowed to work on it. I'm not because I'm not a U.S. citizen. So that was the case. अने I didn't want to work for any other industry to be honest. आई मैं apply कर रखे थे मले तब तो करते हैं but like die hard. I want to still work in the space industry. आई so I came back and there's this only one company called Orion Satellites, Orion Space. That's working here. They're making nano satellites. So for the first month, when I went in and asked people for money, they yeah. wouldn't fund me, right? Uh, nobody was ready like that. Nepal mm-hmm. man is space going, but I think business job. But what business would I forget? I could die. It seems such a like too low. Good again. And then mm-hmm. most of the entrepreneurs I I meet here are genuine. They're really genuine. So Nepal entrepreneurship sector is a case. Any users acquire going on that. Even it's all about like uh, market. Ma, whose name P T Rasa, Dangro was any cause. So I understood they don't know a lot about fundraising. Seed funding, maybe mm-hmm. 10, 20 lakh rupees. I mean, ten thousand to fifty thousand. That's not mm-hmm. a lot of money, uh, money in terms of seed funding. Angel investors are like, but this is one the body guard or anything. Mm-hmm. So like, even the best ones, uh, they don't have that many users. Iseva is a is a great example. Uh, mm-hmm. They have. Or like their payment wallet here, just like uh, uh, Venmo, mm-hmm. and they have a lot of users here. Ani you sab kura lai chay. There's not a space dialogue pani bhai rathe na. So I wanted to start this thing for uh, hard tech, especially really mm-hmm. extremely hard tech, moonshots mm-hmm. and biotech companies. Haru lai chay kosa risk ne paisa raise garna lai. You can always learn these uh, things here. And my aim is to have uh, different uh, innovation centers here in Nepal, mm-hmm. so that like. I mean, the manufacturing country in our opinion, innovation or service industry, who knows? Also, for example, mm-hmm. if you came to Nepal and you wanted to do this big research in terms of emo- emotional intelligence, and mm-hmm. you wanted to put like some um, MRI scans, got it? Ah, much other pictures, they got it. Like, how do you stimulate this? And you wanted to do that kind of research. Any real estate value in US is very high. Ah, uh, working uh, professional or good value, even comes up. Programs are there. So, so much. Where would you go? Nepal dance will be able to find you. So, Nepal. Could be the place to do innovation. So that's my mm-hmm. dream, right? Uh, and if make it an innovation hub, like innovation hub, and that serves two purposes. Eora kura amne just ma aunye tourist mana ko booka tourist mana. Eora nora ma kura garsa. But then if you bring in scientists, if you're bringing in like top minds to Nepal, like na kuna ma, because they're building roads now, right now. Nepal is in a perfect place. I mean, infrastructure development by that. So people are mani ko say you can. Open different innovation places, and then you can get all those people to buy these cheap lands and do innovation mm-hmm. here. The patents or co pay salary, the taxes or le na we can fuel our economy. Or co gura the tourist or who I ra ko mancharu jo resource gar na usa. Of course they will go and watch all the waterfalls, mountains, and rhinos and tigers. Mm-hmm. That's the kind of tourist you want. Like you want Elon Musk to come to Nepal and talk about all the potential of building a hotel in Mount Everest or some mm-hmm. science base station. Not that I'm saying we don't want like the tourists that are coming into con- our country right now, but then I would I would really enjoy if Elon Musk or Jeff Bezos yeah. or anybody, even Satya Nadella, could come into Nepal and talk mm-hmm. about investing in Nepal. That's the type of discussion we want. And why this is the perfect time for me to move on? So, because uh, by 2030, the financial capital of the world, though, our compass will be raised imaginary. That's going to be in between China and India. So, which country is in between China and India? Nepal. Mm-hmm. So, I really think that's the aim I want, and that's a far-fetched dream. So, what's the smallest thing I can do? Um, I can't go around and saying like convincing people like uh, what Mahabir Pundai has done. Like that's yeah. not my capability, and mm-hmm. I am not a uh, social service worker to do that. I'm really a, a money-minded person and a capitalist. And yeah. what I can do at this time is there's um, I can bring out stories. I can share my advice and I can learn from this too. Like, how about you join conversation or mali jati si ke? Ah, is the conversation or mali dera zana song gori sa ke so. Anu maar le baro mali jati si ke ke so yo pachilo char varsa mali mechanical engineering gor da kheri te di si ke na hola. Kine ki yo real life lessons ho. 
त्यो बुक्सहरू पढेर धेरै कुरा सिकिन्छ सो द्याट्स दि एम अफ दिस पडकास्ट इज टु टिच मी एन्ड देन होपफुली समबडी व्हाट इज क्यान लर्न फ्रम व्हाट आई लर्न पनि अनि डाउन द रोड यदि मलाई यही गर्दा गर्दै लाइक समबडी सिज द्याट आई एम डुइङ दिस अनि दे क्यान हेल्प मी फन्ड ओर दे क्यान हेल्प मी ब्रिङ इन अल दिज थप माइन्ड्स फ्रम अल अल ओभर द वर्ल्ड that would be a win like even if i get like one startup to come here and do something i would think that as a win ani i've convinced one person to come back and then that person was like really interested in everything and i think that's a win to bhai ta aba malai chai tedi chai aba aru chai bhanu jasto chai chaina alki actualize bhako chaina khali podcast ta gari rahecho and another thing is what is happening what i've noticed about this thing is everybody has been asking me to break these uh, podcast things down like conversation into clips what yeah. i understand is uh, i understand that's a good form of uh, digesting uh, mm-hmm. like content tar ma euta kura chai mero chai ekdam bhitra bada bhanna khojeko kura chai so you want to be an entrepreneur being an entrepreneur means you have to fight an uphill battle you don't have to, you don't have the luxury of getting bored you have to grill through it If you can't watch a 50 minute video in a topic you're interested, right? I'm just saying even if the boring parts are there, I don't think you have what it takes to be an entrepreneur. It's it's very uh uh sad or I might seem like oh I'm defending this, but then yeah. that's the case. Kina ki whenever I watch things people aajkal manche haru ke sen because of TikTok, Instagram, Facebook and everything, attention span is chota sa. Yeah, and the difference i see is uh alikati ali successful person alikati successful entrepreneur their attention span is so long like unale euta kitab din ma ekai choti bhai dinchan kinaki they don't have time and and the luxury to read a book book over the week and mm. that's the kind of person you have to be and that's why i've like chosen not to break it yeah. down so these are the certain issues that i see uh that needs to change you know um, i've seen people watch joe rogan's podcast for like hours and i my, myself was that for learning how yeah. to do uh, interviews and learning like uh, uh aspects of personality of different people he invites and then i watch uh, uh different other podcasts that i do not want to name because joe rogan's is the only one that doesn't get me called out because other podcasts go aru aru kura pani huncha so that's the vision i have and i do, and I do think that there could be a lot of things to improve and a lot of mm-hmm. things to uh change but then gist of it is to have like nepali entrepreneurs and especially um uh, smart people to come to nepal because uh, if you don't uh cash in on the opportunity you are given now like yeah. 20 years later you're going to be thinking to bela goreko bhaye hai bhanda um what else do you want to ask i guess I- that was the question we had i'm like i'm very thankful for the platform that you gave me to talk about something that i'm passionate about and this is definitely a learning experience and also i opening i feel like i learned a lot about nepali culture that i didn't know i guess that's well, thank you to you <laughs> If you are come to Nepal for those hey uh yeah. okay this this uh, this is like the things i would like recommend do get like um do get like the, the habit of asking your people to like i don't know if you uh, use like tissue paper to do like bathroom ko lagi se to toilet yeah. paper yeah, yeah. like ask them and go get it all the ekdam easy sa bhat bhat ni ma gaur je pani lina sakinchha and uh, there's this uh, there's uber like a variant of uber called pathao here uh-huh. and uh, and it's not that like cheap it's almost as expensive as a uh, uber back there and i can't yeah. understand who can afford it eh? uh, yeah. uh they do offer bike rides but like i would say uh if you if, if you're taking the car option uh, do get a lot of friends um or kokura like people here are really nosy about everything <laughs> so uh they will ask you a lot of questions that are really invasive yeah. to your personal space but then you mm-hmm. kind of have to like shrug it off it'd be more like they would think it was nothing but then it would mean a lot of things on the orko kura grandmas yeah that's <laughs> like I, they're asking me when i'm getting married uh and i know there's a lot of gender disbalance like the type of experience you have and i have is going to be yeah. different they're going to ask you a lot of questions about like when you're going to get married and all of that be ready for that 
other than that yeah do get a mask a really good mask okay. uh because there's a lot of pollution going on yeah, around. yeah it's, it's very polluted and especially in Kathmandu yeah and uh, if you're coming here for winter i would suggest uh um uh, do go to pohara it is really wonderful out there uh yeah, yeah, uh, mm, like if you go and meet a lot of people there like the pohara is a little bit more laid back than kathmandu hai ani aru ta kei chaina testo kathmandu ma nepal ma ali testo bawale bhako food pan delivery huncha haina ali mangai huncha ali ali nepal ko comparison ma tara videsh bada aaye bhane pachi ani arko kura videsh bada aako bhanera kasala na hona haina party street that's a lot you sab bhanera sabai jana aauchan tara it's like You know, some people are nice. Some people are always trying to rip you off. Theo, yeah. yeah, Ani, yeah, or the gay China. Theo, uh, yeah, I'm very excited for my trip. It's nice yeah. to travel because they've got. Uh, and if anybody else like, I'm the audience. Mani, koi unun sa ani mali dere kura butcher gare Nepal ko baare ma, na mani bokar bokar aago su. Mani comment ma lekhra wala bhannu wala na. तला पट्टी सब लेख दिन मेरा लिस्ट बनाकर तब रेकमेंडेशन्स वहाँ पठाई दी अभी अर्क मैं तैं सप्टल नेपाली नेटवर्क भाई फेसबुक ग्रुप को भी राख देखे लिंक तो हेन होगा सायद सबजना ने जोइन कर एक चोटी वहाँ गा पर्स तो एट स्पैम हाँने तैं एकदम ऊ घाम घाम नगर् एकदम प्रोफेसनल कुरा हो डाएसपोरा के तब जी लेवरेज लिना सकूँ तो लिखा वहाँ धीरे धीरे धन्यवाद आज आईदे में हम हमीस यो समय बिताई दिवस शनिवार एक दिन दुई दिन हो शनिवार आईतवार बिता ते एक दिन हमीस यहाँ इंटरनेट कनेक्शन नई नई कहीं वहाँ आएर लोकेशन चेंज कर कर दूँ वहाँ धीरे धीरे धन्यवाद वहाँ अब नेपाल आने भाई एकचोटी हम ए फिर इन्फर्मल एक किसिम ने एट फोटो अफ करने पक्क इफ सी इज कम्फर्टेबल विथ दैट इसका साथ ही हम मुड बाई भू तैयार वहाँसंग एक बाय बाय सी यू अगेन इन द डिफरेंट पॉडकास्ट